Thank you. Thanks, Lori. So I've just started the live stream. So welcome everyone to the ArtsLink assembly. Uh, you can see I'm in the remote ArtsLink studio here. Um, this is the final week of what's been a five week assembly. Usually we're uh, spending one day together in New York. This, this year we've spent, um, we've spent five weeks together online. Uh, and this is really the concluding week where we're bringing lots of the strands of thinking uh, and ideas together. Can I just suggest you uh, mute your mics when we're not, uh, you're not yes. speaking? We can do that um, so this, this day is very much focused on the ArtsLink International Fellows of 2020. We probably, as you know, have a three-year uh, residency program that, that enables fellows. Мне в этом году знаете, сколько податкового? Семь тысяч этот квартал. А следующий вы знаете, сколько у меня будет? We can hear you very loud. So uh, we moved this year, of course, to working online, and really, what I want to explore with everyone, the fellows and the hosts is how that experience was and how it has impacted their work and how they've been able to use the virtual platform of uh, the residency to develop their ideas and to develop their thinking. So first of all, um, I should introduce myself. I'm Simon Dove, I'm the uh, director of CC ArtsLink. Uh, what I've asked everyone to do is to introduce themselves just to give you a sense of uh, their practice and where they're based and whether they're a fellow or a, a host. Um, and given that everyone has a different image, I think on the screen, it's gonna be important to, uh, for me perhaps to, to call you uh, out um, just to say then who you are, your practice, where you're based, and perhaps then who you're working with. And we'll do that fairly quickly going around uh, everyone. So can we start with you, uh, Bermed? Uh, yes, of course. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bermed uh, Borubayeva. I'm an artist and curator uh, based uh, in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, mostly, but uh, yeah, I have uh, uh, I work was mostly with the urban environment and labor rights. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, Dante. Hi, um, I am Dante Bu. Uh, I'm from Montenegro, and I will be next year uh, at the Contemporary Center in New Orleans. Uh, but until then, I had the pleasure of working with uh, Laurie Pritchard, who is the director and curator of Performing Arts. And in my art, I'm mm, very curious about uh, untold stories and queer perspectives. Great. Uh, Gideon? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gideon Kravache, and I'm calling in from Vermont, where I'm based, um, and I work with, I'm working with uh, Ioana Iris, who's based in the Republic of Georgia, and um, I work as a vocalist and facilitator and educator. Uh, one of the projects that I do is with Found Sound Nation, based in New York City, and um, I'm really excited to, to see where this conversation goes today and to meet you all. Great. Uh, and Miriam? Hello. Nice to see you all. I am uh, Anne Miriam Weikla, and I'm from Estonia, based in two cities in Tallinn and in Narva. And my practice lies in the intersection of performing arts, but also visual arts. Um, yes, and I also work as a curator and my host institutions are Triangle Arts Association and Grand Central Art Center. 
the one in New York and one in uh, Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. So Iman. Hello, everybody. I'm Iman Zaki. I'm um, the manager of Reflection for Arts. It's based in Alexandria, Egypt. Um, I'm, uh, I work as an actress as well as a curator. My host uh, is a 600 highwayman, Abby and Michael. Um, and that's it. Uh, Laurie? Um, hello, everyone. I'm Laurie Pritchard, and thank you, Dante, for the introduction. As he said, I'm the Curator of Performing Arts at the Contemporary Arts Center in New Orleans. Katja? You need to uh, unmute yourself. Does it work now? It's great. It's important for a vocalist. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Katja Schulz. I'm a vocalist, a musician from Slovenia. I'm based here in Ljubljana. Um, my host is the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And my project is, ba is based on uh, indigenous culture, on its tradition, its poetry. I mostly focused on setting poetry to music and performing poetry. Uh, Mirna? Hey, uh, my name is Mirna Bamie. Um, I'm speaking to you from Ramallah, Palestine. Uh, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Uh, my work is mostly uh, in food, my medium is food. I do uh, live art performances, video, different, different things, but it all revolves around food for the past three years. And I will be staying at the Invisible Dog this next year, and I cannot wait for that to happen. Lucia, good, good intro. You're still uh, mute. I know you're good. I'm on mute. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, very nice to meet all of you, um, most of you for the first time. Um, and I'm um, looking forward to this conversation. My name is Lucien Zion. Uh, I'm the founder and director of an art space in Brooklyn called the Invisible Dog Art Center. And uh, I'm also a little chef. I'm cooking um, a lot in a place called La Salle à Manger, the dining room. Um, and I will have so Mirna um as a guest for a few weeks and um i want to send a special hello to my um fellow from alexandria because i am from alexandria too <laughs> john hello i'm john spiak and i'm the director and chief curator of cal state fullerton's grand central art center located in Santa Ana, California, Southern California. And we're co-hosting and Miriam Vekla for her residency with Triangles Gallery. Joanna? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Joanna Ayers. Uh, I am the Kosciuszko Arts Link Fellow. I come from Poland, uh, but at the moment uh, I am based in Georgia and the Caucasus. Um, I will be very lucky to be hosted by Found Sound Nation in New York. At the moment, I'm working with Vivian Crevoche and Jeremy Paul. And uh, I'm a musician, um, mostly interested in working with the voice and finding the um, connection between the voice, body, and emotion. Mega. Hello, everyone. My name is Megha Ralapati. I oversee the residency program at Hyde Park Arts Center on the south side of Chicago, a community-focused arts center. And we will be hosting Bermia next fall. Vitali. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Vitali Chernetsky. I'm a professor at the University of Kansas, uh, Department of Slavic and Eurasian Languages, Literatures, and Cultures. Um, 
really happy to uh, be now one of the hosts for the CEC Arts Link uh, program for the fourth time and looking and have already begun and looking forward to doing more work with our fellow, which uh, who is Alevtina Kahidze. Abby and Michael, or should I say 600 highwaymen? We're open to either. Um, or I'm, Ab I'm Abby, this is Michael. We are 600 highwaymen. We are based um, in between New York City and um, Rensselaerville, New York, which is upstate. Um, we make performances. Right now we're working on a performance, a series of performances that are facilitating conversations around strang with strangers. Nova. Hi, um, I'm Nova Benway. I'm the director of Triangle Arts Association, which is a visual arts studio based residency in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and with John from Grand Central Arts Center, we're co hosting um, Anna Miriam Baikla in Estonia. Zach. Hello. I'm Zach Treger from Amusa Projects in Austin, Texas. Um, we're hosting Mikhail from Georgia and yeah, greetings everybody. Aleftina. Hello all, my name is Aleftina and I'm an artist who works with um, performance, drawings, uh, research and the topic which is is mostly interested for me is a garden and archive and I'm going to Kansas to Slavic Department University and Vitaly is one of the representative of this uh, university. Erin? I'm back. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a little technical problem. Um, I have you, been hearing you. You're back, that's good. Can you hear me? Yeah, very much, very well. I have been able to hear you the whole time. So I've been listening to your introductions. Um, my name's Erin. I work for the Portland Institute for Contemporary Art. It's PICA in Portland, Oregon. Um, Dante was here last year and as part of our festival. And um, this year we're hosting um, Ashat, who I'm not sure if um, Ashat is in the meeting um, yet. Correct. Yes. Okay. Hopefully he'll uh, join soon. It's true. I'm looking for a shot, but I don't. See him. But if he joins, uh, we'll we'll feed him in. So uh, thank you, everyone. That gives the the viewers a clear sense not only of the range of your practices, but the uh, the geographic scope of your of your work. Um, I'm, I'm curious to start with a, an open question, and um, it really is for all of us to respond to, uh, and perhaps in, in dialogue to uh, respond to each other. But I'm curious, when we propose the idea of uh, moving, of course, away from uh, bringing you physically to the US this year because of the pandemic, but proposing we work virtually, I'm curious as to how you responded to that. I've heard from a number of other residency organizations that many artists were resistant because they had a very clear idea about what a residency was, could be, and how it would work. And we proposed something very different. I'm, I'm really curious uh, as to what your initial thoughts and reactions were to the idea of being hosted or hosting to the, to the US hosts. Uh, artists virtually. Who would like to start, or or I can uh, I can dive into people. I can start. Got you. Thank you. Because I can just say that I felt exactly as you described. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was quite. Uh, I was. It was quite strange. Uh, the whole idea and I was quite terrified of it and um, you know all kind of mixed emotions mm. but then the the, the, the story turned uh, as we you know went in inside of the process uh, 
I'm actually enjoying it and there are benefits of it. I see it as a sort of uh, preparing time uh, before we actually gather as a research time. So I hope this gives you an idea. But what, uh, what moved you from that initial reticence? What, what, was, what was the motivation to, to dive in and explore it? Yeah, I'm not such a, uh, how would they say, Zoom or, you know, a virtual person. So that was probably the thought uh, that, you know, scared me because I'm used to, I mean, I like to go physically to the place, physically see people. So once I accepted it and uh, I guess I saw it works also in a way, uh, then it just naturally turned. I'm not saying that I wouldn't enjoy, you know, the original idea of going and meeting, I know, Sheila in person, having coffee with her live and exchanging thoughts. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my experience uh, is that it works as well in uh, the way we are working now virtually. I mean, you just adjust your work, uh, you, you, you know, you adjust uh, the things you do now and maybe it's not the original plan, but uh, that you can still do a part of your work in this way. And Dante, you're shaking your head a lot. <laughs> uh, you're muted, yeah. Sorry, I'm shaking my head uh, because uh, I don't know, like my connection is like super, uh, it's kind of like trying to, to pick up everything. But, but how was your response to the idea of uh, being hosted virtually? Uh, I mean, like, it's just, it, I don't know, it was, it felt like normal for the time being, what, what happened, and it's kind of like it felt in a way safe. Of course, I wanted to, to go to New Orleans, because that would have been fabulous, but uh, as I said, for me, it is a very great pleasure to work with Lori and we've been doing a lot. So it's kind of like, it, it, at the moment, it feels very natural because I mean, here we had like several lockdowns from country to city and now again, we are heading to another one. So it's kind of like, I think this is a good way in order to keep moving forward, that you have this idea of moving forward then, because there was nothing else to be done according to the situation. Yeah, Nova, can I move to you? Because I uh, remember when we were having a conversation, um, you were very clear that it was opening up a lot of possibilities for a, a, a level of conversation and dialogue that was actually unusual. Uh, could you expand on your thinking, your experience? Sure, yeah. I mean, it's been tremendously helpful for us to um, be in conversation with John. I mean, the times that we've met on Zoom with, with Anne, we've also, you know, it's been a three-way conversation and also to have you involved actually um, for some of the calls. So it feels much more collaborative, um, and I think, I mean, Anne should speak to this, but I think it's beneficial to, to even to hear, you know, the different ways that different organizations work with artists. Um, I think that's something that artists uh, and curators maybe can make a comparison over time as, you know, if they go through multiple residencies, but, but being able to do that at the same time um, and have that kind of dialogue has been, has been great for, for us. And I also feel, you know, I mean, I think we'll probably all agree that there's no substitute for being in a real place with, with, real, <laughs> with real people. And I don't think that that will ever go away, but it's kind of um, forced us, I think in a good way to do things that probably I would like to continue doing, you know, when all of this, not that it will go back to normal, but you know, when things, you know, um, when there's a certain kind of regularity that returns that, these kinds of longer term conversations that happen, you know, a year or many months in advance. I mean, I really feel like we're laying the foundation 
um, and understanding the, the research process. And, you know, I've started doing it with other artists even um, who will be joining us much sooner. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that that will really enrich and deepen the experience when, when it actually does happen. Are there other uh, thoughts on this issue? Yeah, Lucien. Uh, yes, what I would like to say is um, more, um, uh, I think we have to um, uh, thank you, Simon, uh, for being so persuasive and to continue this program uh, and to encourage all of us um, to change our um, habits and pattern. And so that's um, also something we have to say about you and your organization. It's still not overcome your... Uh... Your Zoom phobia, though. <laughs> I know it's the second Zoom I'm doing in eight months. So, oh, great. We're very honored. Thank you. <laughs> um, Eddie, Eddie, Iman, yeah. Well, actually, actually, for me, it was very beneficial um, um, having this kind of um, talks with Abby and Michael before even thinking of going to New York um, to understand more about the place that I'm going to visit, to understand more about the scene, um, to have an idea about what kind of right questions that I need to ask. So I think um, this period is, for me, it's really beneficial. And maybe uh, you can consider, um, like, of course, not, not that big period like one year or so but like shorter period like one month before uh, the next um, rounds uh, to have like one month before going to uh, their host uh, places to have um, interaction via um, websites or by via, via internet in order to understand more about what they are going to what they are expecting or what they are going to do that's great um, anyway, uh, Vitali, yeah. Yes, I just wanted to echo what uh, Iman just said. I mean, with each uh, fellow we host, it's wonderful also to develop a network of local uh, allies, partners with whom we work to make sure that the fellow has a meaningful and rewarding experience here. And in this particular case, it's giving us a longer head start and it, it is, of course, complicated by the difficulties of the pandemic, but uh, folks have been remarkably willing to uh, step up, find uh, ways in which one could engage, and especially uh, given that uh, Aliftina, our fellows project, involves gardening and something that is tied to a natural cycle, which during the typical uh, time of the res physical residency here in the northern hemisphere it's already past harvest time so most of the uh, gardening experience is not possible this way uh, it looks like we will be able to plan and develop a long-term project that will be carrying on during the year and this is actually quite exciting it's great uh, Gideon, yeah. Um, the experience that that we have with Fanta Nation doing residencies over the last almost ten years, there's there's usually this uh, this very concentrated amount of time where the residency happens over a month or a few weeks, and there's this explosion of creative energy. And I'm finding that this is such a unique chance for for as people are saying to really research and go deep and slowly evolve an idea that it sometimes can be a little frustrating but there's something to be said for this really slow intentional uh approach to to making something and getting to know Joanna so so well we've had a lot of really it's a lot of our our meetings over the last few months have just been about getting to know each other and our artistic processes and our stories, our life stories. And that is something that can only happen to a certain extent in the, in the span of a, a few week residency. Um, so that's, that's been a really interesting thing to, 
to experience. So can we move then forward a little bit to what's what's been working? I know many of you have been using different methods to connect and to, to communicate, but also to connect fellows to uh, different artists and different colleagues. Uh, can you share a, a little sense of what's been effective, what's really been working uh, well for, for you in, in terms of, as Gideon says, building the relationship, but also uh, exploring the ideas? Zach, do you want to talk about your uh, your little WhatsApp usage? Sure. Yeah. Um, because it's I the think... same of not always trying to schedule video meetings, but finding other ways to be uh, in dialogue with your with your fellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to answer maybe both your first question and this question. I think the hurdle for myself and for the residency program here in general has always been to try and think around um, what feels like maybe the most important part of any resident arriving in Austin is to go eat, have a beer and sit for an hour or two or be friends, like to develop trust with each other and um, not necessarily even talk about art, but to, to gather physically. Um, so the way that we've sort of navigated that is just uh, through WhatsApp and casually sending each other messages. I feel like I just have another friend in Georgia, which is very nice. And sometimes we talk about heady art concepts and sometimes we share about not art at all and talk about, he's very excited about Tex-Mex food. And I'm very excited to, to talk to Mikhail about Tex-Mex food. Um, so yeah, I think the um, keeping it very low pressure has been always like a part of the program here. It was very nice that we previously had a resident artist from Georgia, uh, Anna, who I think I see in the chat, which is lovely, um, and that they got to hang out and meet. But we, I think it's like short form, modern short form letter sending or something and that uh, Mikhail will send a few texts and the next day I'll wake up and be like, oh, great. And be excited to respond and just, yeah, becoming friends. Um, in a very drawn out fashion. And I think it will complement future projects. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. And uh, Aaron, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Ashot is not with us to talk about his, um, his experience, but uh, what I was able to join you on was your sort of open house. It's, it's again, this uh, extension of the idea of let's meet together and, and share drinks and bread and uh, chat, but you did it all virtually with a kind of open house uh, Zoom session. Uh, could you share how that worked? Sure. Um, I've seen in the chat that Mamie is trying to help Ashot um, join. So maybe they yeah, will come, but- he, He's um, coming now. It's MacBook is oh. he, him, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, he's Mr. MacBook. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about you. Welcome. Uh, I could. Okay. So can you hear yes. us? Yes. Yes. Hello, everyone. Sorry for being late. It's it's a, it's always a problem with the internet in Uzbekistan. Yeah. You know. Okay. We didn't know your name was MacBook. I think. Uh, I will change it now. Oh but, no. But Aaron is, oh, yeah. Sorry. Erin is talking about the open house uh, she set up with Mummy and and uh, you and oh, yes. Oh yes. So we, um, you know, similar to Austin, we have a big food culture in Portland. So we would also normally um, invite uh, the host and some local artists to meet over food and drinks. And um, it's sad we couldn't do that, but we did have sort of a coffee time uh, meeting and Mamie was successful in getting um, a good group of artists and uh, local, you know, Portland folks here to meet um, a shot. And I, I do think one thing we've learned from hosting many residents is that 
um, those kind of um, synchronistic meetings in between people are really important. You never know exactly who's going to um, make a connection and end up collaborating together. So it's important to bring the element of chance in um, to the meetings and the hosting as much as possible. And that's pretty hard to do online. Um, but I think inviting more people into the process and being open to see who's interested in meeting um, the fellow. And, and uh, yeah, it doesn't always, um, you can't always prescribe or match make, you know, who you think they need to meet. Um, I think by introducing them to a lot of different people Sometimes, you know, they'll meet one person and then they'll say, oh, you need to talk to this person, you need to talk to this person, and it's the second or third person that ends up being the, um, where they make a real connection. So we're trying to replicate that. And it's good to have time um, also, um, because when we are able to welcome um, Ashat in person, hopefully next year, he'll already know um, something about us and vice versa. So I should, uh, everyone said uh, who they are and where they are uh, and who they're connected with. So we now know some of that story, but it, it might be good if you can just uh, share with the viewers uh, where, where your base and, and what your practice is and share perhaps some of the processes have been, you've been using to, to connect to PICA. So yes, thank you. Uh, Simon. Um, uh, yes, uh, once again, hello everyone. My name is uh, Ashot Danilian. I'm from Uzbekistan. I'm a poet, uh, rock musician, and uh, uh, I do some multidisciplinary uh, projects, arts projects, uh, like cross cultural, and uh, it's something around these. So, um, and um, uh, with the Arts Link program, I, uh, um, um, I have a connection. I, uh, uh, my host organization is, uh, is PAICA. Uh, it's um, Erin, uh, Erin uh, uh, Bomberg and, um, um, and Mamie. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, from we, we started some um, uh, thinking uh, about the collaborations, and um, uh, I really feel thankful for Erin and Mamie that uh, they already um, find uh, fa found some uh, very interesting. Uh, connections and um, artists from. Uh, Portland and just not on, only from Portland but like some interesting artists who I might be interested in uh, in, a, in a collaboration so I already uh, just uh, a few days ago uh, uh, had a meeting with Eiko Otake uh, who is an artist from the uh, from the New York and we have both interested in the, the uh, nuclear disaster in Fukushima. This is very interesting because I, I used to uh, live there as well. And so we had a very uh, interesting conversation and, uh, and um, thoughts about this. And also I just recently have the uh, idea and I talked to Mamie because uh, me with my band are going to have the online concert on 21st of November. And now we're just thinking about what if there would be some artist, maybe perf 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 performative artist or someone who could be, uh, who could share with us this performance from the US. Uh, I know it's it's maybe too early uh, and, but just it's, it's just came up and uh, why not as an experiment? So this idea also came up. It's a good, I mean, it's a good way, method of also connecting in a different way to a, a potential group of artists you want to work with. You know, with, with Ashut, we were, we were talking more about um, 
what's what methodology we were using to make these connections. Um, and I, I'd like to extend the thinking more to how that changed, uh, either what your practice normally is or how it's extended your thinking about what is possible with this fellowship. Uh, working in this virtual way and, and connecting in a very different way. As, as you explain now, you're already talking to people who are not anywhere near Portland or even in Oregon, but you're connecting across the country. Um, others have talked about other international connections they're making. So the, the, the issue of the virtual residency has moved the idea of our networking or our thinking to something beyond the, the, the specifics of a community in which you may be living or based, even the, the city or the state in which you're based, to look at more at how ideas connect you to other artists and other ways of thinking. Um, and I'm curious for you to share uh, some of that thinking if by working in this virtual way, it started to extend your ideas of what is possible. And especially if it's changing your ways of thinking about the way you work as, as artists. Um, so, yes. Um, okay. Question, I showed, you don't have to answer, but if, you, uh, if you'd like to start, please do. <laughs> so it was a long uh, question, very long question. So I just um, want to say that um, here in Uzbekistan, we have this very, um, a very strong specific and to be true uh, we're always uh, searching for the alternative way to express ourselves because we still have very strong censorship it's not very good developed and for us it's kind of I don't know maybe natural to find the alternative way of collaborating of so for me it's not very you know strange to to have these zoom meetings to do online projects to do something very alternative uh, to like a classical way maybe so that's why i found it quite comfortable for me because like previously as i said we did um kind of successful uh, networking project across the Central Asia, uh, which is also, it, 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 it called uh, the Art Plough. It started and, and we made just a collaborative when it was a lockdown. Uh, we made a co collaboration with just uh, four countries, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. And just on the virtual way, we had some you know, collaborations and we did a book. And now, well, it was a British Council project, but I want to just continue and continue this. And uh, we made actually a book in the virtual way. And I really believe that uh, it, it works good because I have this kind of, um, um, well, small success for doing these virtual projects. And uh, even now, yes, uh, so I, I just uh, making the research of those artists who were suggesting uh, to, to, to me from uh, Erin and Miami. And I found a lot of opportunities actually, at least just to, to meet them, to talk to them uh, via Zoom or something. And um, uh, the the last meeting with Eiko Take was very, I don't know, if, was it um, um, uh, um, if, uh, uh, in, in um, was it good for her? But for me, it was very, very nice. And it was very uh, impressive that I could just meet someone from US and doing the same things in the in the uh, way of uh, Japanese things I'm interested in, um, and so yes, for me it's it's very useful work. So, are there other uh, 
thoughts on this issue about extending your practice or shifting your way of thinking about how you're working? I was thinking, um, ah, yeah, Bermet, yeah. You need to. Yeah, unmute. I'm uh, super uh, happy uh, to be a resident in the Hyde Park Art Center. And um, I was lucky also because now I'm in, re in residency in Moldova. So I came here and I feeling me a bit like in residency anyway, that it's like give me opportunity to be out of everything and uh, just concentrate on my work. And uh, also it was uh, for me always a question about how we can build our work, our methodology in all these uh, times. And now it, uh, and because uh, we uh, move everything to online uh, and uh, we had a group of students, we, we restarted the School of Contemporary Art in Bishkek. And we had a group of students that uh, we wanted to share with them, meeting with the uh, artists from Chicago. And uh, it was, uh, I think, super great that we were able to invite our students. And artists also was uh, not against this. So, and uh, actually, this uh, part of our my virtual residency was incrustated to the uh, to our. Uh, like school program and actually the all this meeting were like public and open and we still want to make uh, this practice uh, further and uh, I also like it that we sharing uh, the methodology with the artist uh, I really had a super nice conversation with uh, Melissa Potter and she's uh, producing uh, paper and it's uh, her art uh, project and she even grows uh, cellulose and plant it and uh, yeah she can uh, make a super nice work and then also met uh, Rudy and Medina uh, Rudy Medina and Alex uh, from Open Kitchen and uh, they also uh, showed us uh, tell us about um, their uh, practices with food uh, and yeah, it was super interesting and also uh, Selma Banich, uh, uh, she's from uh, Bosnia and uh, we also talk, talk a lot about methodology and next uh, year we decided to concentrate on our educational platform mostly on uh, methodology and uh, art research and I think it, we will uh, collaborate uh, with them further. And for example, Melissa Potter wanted to make uh, for us uh, open workshop how to produce paper. So I think if you, uh, anyone from you also interested, we like always can join and collaborate. And it was also interesting uh, how we can put in touch also art Chicago artists between themselves. And for next year, um, yeah, because it's unknown about all these borders and etc., uh, we're planning to conduct some events uh, just uh, in two cities like Bishkek, Chicago, because yeah, it looks like quite quite affordable, and um, yeah, I also like uh, these uh, like intersections and uh, experimenting with format, and I really f I'm glad that I have. Uh, opportunity to read in advance before I come because one month it's uh, like too too short period to be really involved uh, to the uh, context. So I think uh, we had uh, having a really good now experience as well. Um, thank you. Great and um, and Miriam, I wanted to bring you in because. Uh, you have the benefit of having two hosts, which again, we know uh, is not feasible if you're physically here, especially one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. Um, and I'm interested in how how that is complementing your own uh, research and your, your own exploration. Yes. So as I mentioned, my I am a scenographer. So my practice is in stage design, performing arts, 
visual art and it's very much about I'm relating to what is there. The idea sort of arose from the context and I work with time and space, ephemerality, also different senses. Um, and besides that, I, I also run an art residency here on the eastern point on the border with Russia uh, in Estonia. So the idea of an online residency, even though I've done it before, has been challenging in terms because really my creative process is usually that I sort of hop into the situation and then I start to relate and listen in. Um, but I think from the moment that I made this switch in my head that it's about to be like a long-term dialogue and engagement that I actually find equivalent kind of like, um, yeah, how to put it like a PhD program or something, then, then things change for me. And I found some peace and I'm sort of, yeah, for now I've been, from these conversations with Nova and John, taking the inspiration to implement it into the projects that I've been working here. Because in Estonia, the society is open and next week I'm stepping up in the biennial here. So it's kind of like, um, I will see how the shape of this own body of work in terms of coming next year to the States will start to take shape, but I will, for now, I've just been giving things space <laughs> and time. And uh, John and uh, Nova then has been um, connecting then with one fellow been interesting from your points of view in terms of your uh, practice with artists or your institutions. The, the nice thing for us is that uh, one of the individuals that she's been researching uh, as part of her, her thesis was uh, Grant Kessler, who has written a lot of books on socially engaged practices. And so it was nice. I know him. We were able to connect her, uh, connect the two of them. And when she comes, he's just down the freeway in San Diego now. So there can be those deeper connections. We've also connected her with Bill Kelly, who is uh, looking at socially engaged practices and public practices throughout Latin America. So um, I think it is, it is tougher because we're used to having an artist in residence here and we do longer term residence. So we have some residents that have been here as long as five years. So we're really about following the lead of the artist and following that process and however long it takes. Uh, but we do, you know, a lot of times do early Skype conversations and early communications online. So this is a normal practice, but I can tell uh, on, a, on is, uh, eager to be here because that the practice is very much about the phys physicality of place. So, uh, you know, we'll make it happen when she gets here, but these connections that are building early, I think will be very beneficial. Yeah, I, I wanted, wanted to add uh, one thing that it really stroked me, this kind of new normal, how easily we can connect with people. As, as John mentioned, like um, I've got the, theorist I've been interested in and I mention his name and the next moment I'm actually exchanging emails so it's quite uh, extraordinary. Yeah. And Miela, yeah, I, I also wanted to say I, I read recently then that you're invited now to the festival of fermentation. Yes, which, uh, which, Culture. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, but can you give, send, give us a sense too of how, how this opens up possibilities, this connection with uh, Lucien? Well, I, was, I was lucky that I visited, I mean, I was lucky that Lucien was at one of my tables in New York last year. And that's how we started the connection. And then I visited the space and it's an amazing space. Everybody should go and experience that space. So I'm really happy that I'll be able to do something there. Um, that really helped a lot because Lucien and I are not really good at this Zoom thing, but we're good at work. We're very serious. So what I did is that I was I knew that I wanted to do something with fermentation, but um, because it's now it's it's my um, it's my focus in my research. Um, 
And somehow I was connecting with people in New York that work in fermentation and the residency was somehow created this mental space for me to approach people and, you know, not to keep postponing it. And that really opened lots of opportunities. And I virtually met amazing people. And now I'll be fermenting uh, new kinds of fermentation with koji, with miso. I'll be doing tempeh. So things that I didn't uh, work with before. Um, and I, uh, what I'm mostly interested in creating when during the fellowship next year is to create moments of gathering. And my whole practice is around those moments. And um, for me, I want somehow to, um, to take the opportunity of the amazing space of the invisible dog and make bigger performances and uh, live, uh, live actions. Um, because fermentation is a very physical aspect that has this connectivity of the human and the microscopic world. It really teaches a lot about um, us and how we should um, look at ourselves and um, you know notions of empathy and care that I think we really need at such times uh, to bring forth more and more and I really hope we will be able to do that like we will all be able to do our projects next year um, yeah so it was a really good opportunity for me because it keeps somehow it, it if, if the project happened this year it would have been totally different from what I want to uh, create for next year um, so yeah and and don't forget Lucien has a great basement for doing lots of fermentation too yes yes and and what I would like to say is um, maybe um, we should also take the but in, in, in general, we will never have the opportunity to be all together like that. So I would have probably not know who are the other artists or who are the other hosts. So I think we should maybe in um, that session next year, try to make connection between all of us during, for example, if Iman brings Molocheya from Alexandria, maybe Mina, you can, you can ferment it, right? <laughs> or something like that. That will be a great experiment, right? I will. We, don't worry. I will. <laughs> we, we can all bring something to ferment for sure. But again, no. yes, I, I think I think we should um, keep that um, um, that connection here and and not have everyone separately our experiences, but try to find connection, even if they are very thin, or just like keep this group together. Exactly. No, a really important part of the fellowship has been to connect the artists each year because many of them are in neighboring countries but rarely are connecting simply locally. So bringing everyone together in, in New York when they arrive, but also just as importantly before they leave, you know, to go back to their home country is a really important part of the program. So that's, um, that's a date, Lucien, will be with you for dinner, fermenting. Maybe we can bring something to ferment and then we eat it all uh, six weeks later. That would be perfect, yes, absolutely. But I'm, I really count on the Molochea from Alexandria. That's really... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you, I can see there's a very uh, important focus there. Um, <laughs> but um, thinking more broadly, uh, Katya, I know... Um, you talked a little bit about your reticence, and and I know in the conversation with your with your host Sheila, who's not with us uh, today, but you also felt um, you needed to embark on this whole process of a kind of almost what you would call a desk based research, um, connecting both to her networks, but also to uh, the histories that she's talking about, to the 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 cultural practice. To there was a lot of uh, groundwork contextualization that you needed to do and that for you was not a usual part of your practice i'm i'm interested in you sharing what emerged from that not necessarily describing it in detail but what emerged for you from that process well as first uh, i'd like to say that dealing with uh, indigenous culture I mean, this is something that is really based. Do you hear me? Yes. This, uh, I mean, this is really based, uh, I mean, deeply rooted in tradition. 
this is uh, it's not uh, you know it has to be done carefully as Sheila mentioned so uh, mm, these things are not very easily accessible as I know from work of previous artists uh, these are we are talking about uh, indigenous communities who are guiding their uh, and uh, you know protecting their culture so it's not just easy to go there and you know show up and I mean I think you have to really really have a good basis and knowledge uh, uh, about certain rules that exist or how can you can approach to this uh, and uh, Sheila is really uh, Sheila is the my host and the, at the Institute of Indigenous Arts and she's really given me a really good foundation she's guiding me very well through you know all these sensitive questions so uh, I started to you know we made this research list and uh, I don't know at the moment I'm uh, I found in Slovenia this book that it's translated and this is the book is uh, based on uh, on speeches of indigenous chiefs, for example, this was, this goes back years back when it was written, and I don't know. It's very helpful at the moment. Um, and as a vocalist, uh, uh, I'm getting ideas how I would like to, you know, do the final project and performance. So uh, I I recently enrolled in a storytelling course. There is also a storytelling course at the Institute uh, that I would like to take part at. Mm. And so this is one interesting uh, uh, a, a part of the project that I'm researching right now. And uh, the other one is uh, the, are the indigenous chants. But I just uh, was discussing this with Sheila and this is really something that's very protected. So for example, uh, I don't know, uh, it's not so very accessible as I thought, but I will see how to find my way uh, through and hopefully get close to the source. Great. Uh, Joanna, you are keen to uh, speak, I think. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. A little, a little um, muffled, but uh, if you can be closer to your mic, that would be great. I will take the microphone closer to my mouth. So, I, um, I think uh, I chose the topic uh, for my research. I was even not aware of it when I was thinking that I would like to uh, expand my knowledge on this topic, that um, um, there is so much <laughs> available especially in New York. Um, so I think if I wanted to work and uh, participate in everything 24 hours a day, it wouldn't be enough because Gideon um, really um, shows me um, so many organizations that deal with this topic of uh, working with the voice and uh, immersing in the connection between voice and body and emotions and um, finding uh, your own voice and then like the healing practices uh, with the sound, with the voice and with the movement. Um, I, I think it's really good for me that we have this uh, virtual residency for the reason that now in the pandemic era everything moved online and all these organizations also started to work online so um, the, um, the classes that would normally take place in new york are now now are taking place in front of the uh, of my computer for example i uh, participated on already twice in the um kind of open uh, workshops run by the company of marriages Monk. Um, in whose work I, I was always very interested and I even didn't dream of <laughs> meeting the people with whom she's been working. So I found it really funny but nice to dance in front of my laptop with uh, maybe 100 of other people around the world and uh, or singing uh, last time some Jewish songs. So uh, such experience 
experience uh, is uh, really good because um, I can uh, explore and see how different organizations work and what are their, their methods. And then when I come to New York, I will already have quite a good um, view uh, what is the methodology of different people of different organizations. So now uh, the task is rather to make like the clever curriculum to choose the right people and places where to go, but he don't really kind of is um, guiding me through this. So I'm sure that we will like after a few months, I will really benefit from this. Uh, to be honest, I um, I don't really know how I will find the connection between all this research and my project. I have some ideas, but um, it's a bit overwhelming for me. So I'm <laughs> feeling a bit uh, lost, but I hope that with the time uh, I will uh, somehow find the, um, the right way. Uh, what I miss is um, some kind of a immersing myself fully in the new environment because uh, as the Simon were was where you were saying in the beginning that we should like come to this residency without a plan for what we want to do with our project um, and I think it would be much easier if we were there in the US and we could like get this fresh perspective I think it's possible to do it online but um, then it would need some more guidance from people who can somehow um, share this, let's say, US perspective or somehow inspire us how to do it. Because um, in just some talks on, on Zoom, I think it's not enough to completely change our perspective and to be able to produce something fresh rather than the things that we had previously in our heads. Great. Uh, and Laurie, can I ask you in, in terms of uh, New Orleans, I, I, I know there's um, a, you know, a regular practice of, of working closely with artists and I'm, I'm wondering how it is for you to be working uh, remotely with, uh, with Dante, whether it's shifting your way of working with artists, whether he's uh, also extending the way you're thinking about what kind of support an art center gives to, a, to an artist? Uh, that's a good question. We've been um, working since March with trying to figure out really how to work with artists and continue to make connections, mostly starting from the artists that we had to cancel, the artists who we had planned uh, to present in, in this 2021 season and obviously a lot of that work has been virtual. Um, we've recorded a number of conversations between uh, Joe Kreider, who has a big project hopefully coming up in the spring and local activists in New Orleans who work on prison reform and the issues of <clears throat> decarceration. Um, so that in a sense has been very constant in a way. It's, it's pragmatic and it's, um, I just mostly don't want to lose touch with those people. And um, I also don't want them to, you know, if they're not from here to be connected to here in different ways. Um, with Dante, we, we've talked a lot, we've shared a lot of links of <clears throat> artists who are um, interesting to, you know, one to the other, people we each knew to share, to share those interests. Um, and there's an online program that was produced here in New Orleans called Letters from the Porch, in which um, a number of musicians, I think they're over 25 now. Um, it's a great series, anybody wants to take a look. They're you know, 15 to 30 minute uh, concerts with musicians playing on their porches. Uh, very New Orleans settings and, and uh, um, the range of the artists in the series is quite stunning. It's, it goes from folk to traditional jazz to, to jazz to rock and roll. I mean, it's really, really um, across the board. Um, so Dante looked at all of those and, um, 
and based on his interests, we're starting to connect to some of those artists here. Um, but when he spoke about other, you know, international connections, and I'll, I'll let Dante talk about this more, I also introduced him to an Irish artist who I know well, <clears throat> who is both a choreographer and a singer. And um, they have very different practices, but there are also some very interesting tangents. Um, and yeah, I'd like to hear Dante talk a little bit more about, because we had a Zoom all together uh, the other day, a couple weeks ago. Uh, yes. Um, um, I mean, it, it was very interesting to, to look at like the music scene because my project is uh, kind of, it is based on collaboration with the musicians. So thanks to Laurie, you know, I've been able to dive into the musical scene of New Orleans, which has been amazing. So it's kind of like, especially in this time where we are all confined to these spaces and like getting like this input of this beautiful music is, is being like very help, helpful and very inspirational. Uh, so we met with Jeb Lewis, who is one of the producers from the Letters of the Porch, and we had like a very productive and very like on point meeting regarding what it takes to produce like a music and music album and songs and everything. And also we met with John Scott, who is a tenor and uh, uh, choreographer from Ireland, and we talk about the possible collaboration. So, and we've been back and forth with a lot of links and like different um, approaches to music and uh, what we are interested in, what could we do and kind of like hoping that once we make this resonant reality that we kind of have like pretty well done to-do list what, what is going to be done. That's great. Um, if I'm missing people uh, putting their hands, please unmute and shout because I'm. Uh, I think I'm missing people. But um, Alif Tina, uh, I thought it would be good also for you to talk about the relationship you you in a sense already had with Vitali and how that has moved forward your project in a in a really kind of exponential way. Yeah. Um actually what we have done already we created a program actually the five events uh, have and we already have had we already have had uh, three meetings actually no two meetings and i have met uh, three institutions in order to plan and also just to be introduced to the people uh, in order to work in a, will be in um, the situation which we all have, the COVID, I mean. So we just have our program and try to go through the already planned events and to be prepared more than it, we could just imagine if we just uh, have the situation like we planned in the past, we just could arrive in the US and start our residency. Now we have kind of privilege to plan in advance and do have some preparation time. Um. Meg is waving, but I just wanted Vitali just to share the context of how, of how you were aware of uh, Alev Tina's work. Yes, uh, I was really thrilled uh, to see her name uh, among the name of the artists selected for residency this year because we had a chance to collaborate many years ago uh, on a different project uh, when at the time she was um, based uh, short term in the Netherlands. And this was in artists book project. And I helped uh, with preparing an English language version of that. And that contact came through another mutual friend who was very active uh, 
uh, Katarina Botanova in the uh, Center for Contemporary Art that was started with the help of uh, um, Open Society Foundation, uh, one of the many foundations started by George Soros in uh, post-communist Eastern Europe in the 1990s. So things built up uh, through that and uh, uh, this allowed many good productive collaborations to happen. And there is a lot of synergy and uh, cross collaboration between fellows, for instance, Alif Tina and the fellow uh, we hosted here at the University of Kansas for the, uh, as our first CAC Arts Link fellow, Alexander Mihet, five years ago, they have also been collaborating. So this, the kind of synergies and building on those past experiences for future interesting projects, I think it's really wonderful. Great, thank you. So uh, Mekha, you were waving, I think, or, or swatting flies, I'm not sure. No. Uh, what I, I was thinking, I can share two things um, just in response to uh, Bermiet's description of this you know, virtual residency phase, that for our residency program, two, there's um, two things that we try to do within it are to invite any artist, whether they're local Chicago-based or visitors, to be able to kind of shift out of the mode of execution and production into one of someone else described um, the kind of chance encounters or some unexpected um, links and connections. And for us, definitely this longer period of the research phase of the residency has, has enabled that, um, where uh, I think Bermiet's broader practice and all of the different kind of facets of it have been able to unfold a bit, even for our own understanding, kind of the complexity of how she's thinking about pedagogy, teaching, about environmental issues, about um, food justice, recycling, for example. And so it's really allowed us to think more broadly ourselves about who appropriate links could be. Um, and kind of unexpectedly, our Arts Link fellow from last year who we hosted, I wouldn't have necessarily thought they would be you know, right to be in conversation, but that it was one of the things that emerged in that conversation of um, our previous res uh, fellow and Vermeer this year connecting made a lot of sense over this time. And the second piece is we are often looking to how this residency experience can be a mutual learning. Um, so at the end of any visitor, visiting resident artists time with us, we try to think about how our institution has shifted and what we've learned and how, you know what really any changes have um, that can result from this. And so one of those things too is these different arms of Behrman's practice, which is the, you know, from bike sharing to recycling and reuse to food justice, to um, policy change and activism, curatorial work, teaching. We sort of realized that in Chicago, these are quite specialized, distinct fields and areas but through Bear Miet's work, we're kind of thinking about how she might actually be able to make introductions to Chicago artists to each other who don't really know each other. And so that's been kind of an unexpected, really exciting way to think about her role and the role that her research um, can play in, you know, maybe further linking art practice in Chicago. Great. Thanks, Mika. Uh, Damet? Uh, can I just uh, say, yeah, I think uh, it's also really um, uh, all what we're having now, it's really uh, in my virtual residence, it's, it's really thanks to you because you really made a great job to like, uh, un like researching uh, uh, different direction uh, and uh, combining with uh, what I'm doing. And we also, yes, thought maybe we can make some kind of guide for such uh, initiatives. And for me, it was also, uh, yeah, as I work with the urban environment, uh, for me, it's always like uh, very clear that, for example, if we work with food, uh, so it's really like very close, for example, like you come and yeah, for like for, for with transportations uh, and transportation is close to bike sharing and everything close to 
close to agriculture seeds and because we all that's why i really like like it's a book of melissa porter potter that called um an illuminated uh, feminist seeds book that is I, I found super great and uh, yeah and i really try when in my like artistic and curatorial practice i really try to put like everything uh in one event just to show as an alternative of how like actually cities can look like and etc so i think uh chicago is also very a uh, cool place uh, to combine such uh, direction and yeah maybe uh, we will have a chance also now for, to join Kishinau and Kaliningrad as well to our festivals because uh, yesterday had also some conversation, but we didn't uh, even had a chance to discuss it with Mega. But uh, probably it, it will maybe it will be something like wider festival or event in this world for our like, initiatives. Yeah, looking forward. Great. Um, I'm just scanning to see if anyone wants to offer anything because um, what I wanted to ask you all was, uh, given the context that we've been in this year, this extraordinary uh, historic moment, this pandemic that's impacted all of us, um, I'm curious as to how this helped you individually or you institutionally uh, in some way get through this uh, this moment how how being part of this scheme was was useful or helpful i could quickly comment on that which is that one of the My surprise um one of the surprise gifts of this is having the opportunity to sort of get out of my American head for a little bit um, to connect with somebody on the other part of the on the on the other side of the globe. Um, obviously, the past few months or few years, depending on how you look at it, have been kind of intense um, on the U.S. domestic side of things. And one of the gifts has been to uh, to connect with Iman and to have moments where we get to take a bit of a break from. Um, um, and, and, and the break happening by way of just hearing somebody else's voice and hearing how they're experiencing this and hearing how things are over there. Um, so on a purely selfish level, not as an institution, but as a, not even as an artist, but just a human being to speak to somebody on the other part of the world um, uh, has been a real gift that I didn't see coming. Um, that would be my knee jerk reaction to, uh, to this, um, to this experience with Iman. Thank you. Thank, Iman. thank you, Michael. Well, can I say, by the other hand, uh, for me, it was when, when you get into the trouble, you get always an extra strength to solve it. So it, it was the same for us, well, at least in, in, in our country, in Uzbekistan, we got uh, in, into big trouble with these pandemic things. Uh, there were, as I said before, like even soldiers with Kalashnikov guns uh, strolling down the, the streets. And when you get this extra uh, pressure, when you get this extra a stressful situation, you kind of think a bit in a different way. You get extra strength, extra inspiration from like, you know, from the inside, I think. And uh, this made me, I don't, I was like planning for five years to record an album with a band. And finally we did it in the, in the time of the pandemic. And uh, it was the first experience for us to make an online concert. And we didn't know what, what it would be and what kind of thing it would be. Uh, but it was quite also successful because a lot of people uh, just uh, saw it. 
and uh, even uh, saw our band for the first time uh, in you know in this kind of way. So yes, there 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 is always kind of you know universal balance, I think. Other other thoughts? I I wanted to ask Gideon actually because. Uh... When we were chatting um, a few weeks ago, you were talking about, you know, in a sense, your uh, aversion now to being overly zoomed and your need to have uh, the personal connection. So you were developing projects. But I'm, I'm wondering if, if this fellowship or this, the process of taking on a fellow has, has been a part or enabled you also to be uh, connecting in a different way. Uh, to another part of the world. Yeah, I think it's um, I, my my initial thought is is actually how how much well Joanna and I share many many interests and um, that's been very nourishing and I think nourishment is something I've been thinking a lot about during this time of how to stay nourished artistically and and not just artistically but <laughs> fully in in the human experience be, be nourished um and so i think a lot of the conversations we've had have been partly Joanna's is interested are very much about uh healing and healing trauma that's in the body through the voice through movement um and this has allowed both of us to to go kind of deeply into research about that topic and it's something that i i often in my own artistic practice have um i'm i'm concerned with these these issues but i haven't given myself enough time to go as deep as we are going now because it's this weekly check-in about this this practice about this process and um and I, I imagine for Ioana, there's a similar, well, I won't put words in your mouth, Ioana, but it, it's, um, it's allowed for something that I wasn't expecting from Zoom communication, which has been quite tiring for me and I'm sure for most people. And uh, Lucien, I'm amazed that this is only your second Zoom in eight months. That's, uh, you deserve a medal for that. <laughs> um, yeah. We get the metal for getting him on Zoom. <laughs> no, we, we just have a few minutes left. Uh, we, we do need to wrap up at uh, 1 30. Uh, so I'm just wondering for others, uh, what else was surprising or, or um, kind of stimulating or uh, provoking? Or I'm just wondering just quick reactions of. What emotion is supposed to be you're really not anticipating or expecting? Apart from uh, 20 different fermentation techniques. Mm -hmm. Any uh, last minute? Oh, okay. Ashut, can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes. It was just a quick, um, what was surprising about this process? What emerged that you were really not expecting? Um, I mean, for me, it was, it, it, it might seem very strange, but uh, it the Arts Link was the only program which wasn't just, uh, you know, canceled. I mean, uh, there was uh, some um, some events and some also different programs which I was also involved in, like in some some gigs in Japan, some things in in, in Tajikistan, and uh, of course I can understand it was all cancelled and that's it, and that was just the stop, and I'm really thankful for the art sling that you just keep doing this. Uh, I know it's, it's difficult, it's hard, 
um, to do this everything online and everything you know to 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 to, to set up everything, but uh, for in in my case in um, in in my area of what I do, the Arts Link was just the, the only ones who didn't give up and did all these things and uh, gathered us all together now. And uh, I just uh, really thankful for this. Well, thank you. It's, it's a great way uh, to end actually that CEC Arts Link never gives up. Um, <laughs> sorry we put you through all this trouble this year, but it's only really thanks to all of you for being so open and willing to engage with each other and with us in rethinking what a, a residency could be, that this has been such a productive, I think, and fruitful year so far. And we look forward to projects that emerge and we hope you will all get to the US next year. Um, I should remind everyone that the, the fellowship scheme is a completely open process. We work with uh, 37 countries now. We've extended the deadline for next year. So the, um, the deadline is now November 30. So uh, for those of you who still haven't applied to be a fellow, uh, you still have a couple of weeks to get your applications in. Uh, and let me thank all of you, uh, fellows and hosts for 2020. We look forward to seeing you all around a very large fermentation dinner at the Invisible Dog uh, next year. So thank you, Lucien, and wow. thank you, uh, Mirna, and thank you, everyone. We'll talk soon. Yes, bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. See ya. Good.